find the body laying out in the neighborhood. We don't see that every day. You know, we have had some shootings in the past, but this is something different. I'm Sheriff Andre Bronson of Macon County, Alabama, and this is my county. You catching me some fish? Yeah. Man, I want some bass. I got you. Okay, I I'll be looking for you bass. tomorrow. I want some good bass. I got some already clean. You got some clean? Yeah. Okay, brother. Well, you take care of yourself, and I'll see you later on, baby. All right. <laughs> you literally know everybody. I know everybody. I I like everybody. I like talking to people, you know? He knows everyone. He just loves people, and he loves Macon County. Look at you. You all right? He think he got the fastest car. <laughs> uh, he say he really do. He say the ghost fastest. I played football here, and I went to college here. And it helped that I was school resource officer for all that time. And I just always try to treat people right. Good to see. Everything okay? No. Probably the most important thing to have a good relationship with the community. Most people are not going to commit a crime in front of the police. So you got to rely on the community. You got to rely on the people to work with you and help you solve these crimes. It's not us just doing this. We got to have the community. And guess what? You out there by yourself, which we are a lot of times, it might be five or ten minutes before you get help. And if something is bad going on, you would want the community on your side to help you. Everybody gets a second chance with him. I mean, and, and again, that, that goes for criminals as well, regardless of what they've done. I, that's one of the things that I think is key with him. What's up, baby? You all right? You all right. I'm saying you ain't working today. Yes, I'm always working. All right, baby. Y'all take it easy. Everybody good? Yes, sir. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Right, you talk to your mama? Yeah, I talk to her. Okay. You talk to your lawyer? Who is your lawyer? You ain't talked to him lately? You need to do that. I treat these kids like they're somebody. I treat these adults like they're somebody. And you have to understand that you're innocent until you're proven guilty anyway. And then once they're proven guilty, they go to court, then they go to prison. But as long as they're down here at my jail, they're still presumed to be innocent. And I try to treat them like they are somebody. It's going good? OK, baby. You need me, you holler at me, OK? All right, you be good now. What's up, fellas? Y'all all right? Everything good? So y'all got to eat my lunch. Y'all got to eat my dinner. Y'all got to eat my breakfast. So in, in between there, I'll let y'all get some pizza. That's fair enough? All right, all right. Y'all keep it clean in here for me, OK? I'll see y'all. Y'all take care, brother. I'll see y'all tomorrow. They deserve to take a bath, they deserve to eat, they deserve to be comfortable. And I try to make it as comfortable as possible for them. And I talk to them and I try to treat them like they're somebody. But uh, you know, you still gonna have a few guys that don't believe in that. There's a few guys, you know, that are true criminals that don't wanna be rehabilitated. And that's okay too. And then we have to take different measures. But until they show me that, hey, they, they are all good. Poverty and crime go hand in hand to me. You know, if, if, a, if a person can't take care of himself and can't take care of his family, then nine times out of 10, he gonna have to do something to do that. Every man, every woman wants to take care of their family. I saw Roy downtown about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and he came up to me and said he was down on his luck and he asked me if I could do anything for him. And we talked about, you know, our weightlifting days and I told him, I might have something for him. He come down and see me. I told him I needed somebody to clean up and he's been doing it ever since. He cleans and he mops and he, he does whatever I ask him to do and definitely don't even have a worry about him not doing it. He's always respectful and he really, really appreciates the chance. And you know, we not watching him and you see what he's doing. He don't even realize he's on camera. You know, he, he, he's just working. And uh, it's worth giving somebody a second chance so they can take care of the family. How you doing, man? You all right? I'm all right. Man, look at here, man. Look at here. I just wanted to tell you, I see you working, man. I appreciate everything. And I appreciate you, and I appreciate the hospitality to give me a chance to be respectful, to keep myself straight and I clean. I want to keep you straight, my brother. That's right. And what I told you the other day, man, respect and loyalty go a long way. You go a long way. Yeah. They advise us to do. 
breathing, being transported to local hospital, and most of the PD is on scene. Okay. Yeah, they got something else going on in another part of the county, too. Man, yeah. this is a busy place. It's busy. Hello? Hey, Chef. Hey. Hey, we got a 33 hip of 1050. One entrapment, I-85 southbound, mile marker 32. Appreciate that. We're on our way. Thank you. Hey, guys. Hey, got a 1050 with entrapment. Let's go. Let's go. I-85. Let's go. Hey, Roy, I see you, man. Let's go, fella. Let's go. It's a very interesting place. You know, it's it's just, it's crazy sometimes. I got a call from the police chief for the city of Tuskegee requesting some help. They said they found a, a body. So we're headed out here to assist them, uh, roping off the scene and trying to help them investigate this, this body that they found. Quiet neighborhood, a lot of people. We'll get to the bottom of it though.